I'm honored, honored for the opportunity I have to speak to you today about my work. I'd like to begin by introducing you to this image. This doesn't appear to be much at the outset, but this is number 51 of a series of photographs I have taken of, X, of DNA using X-ray crystallography. The most interesting thing about this image that I'd like to draw your attention to is the cross that those shadows make there in the center. This pattern tells us almost You've got to be kidding me. It's urgent. Yes. Raymond, you could not have chosen a worse time to call me. You saw them? Well, they can't publish. It's our photograph. How close are they to completing the model? Yes, thank you. I will. Yes, thank you. Will you go get my coat, yes, please? Yep. Um, you must excuse me. Two of my colleagues, Watson and Crick, have taken my data, and if I get back in time, I can stop them before they publish. So thank you very much. Um, there won't be time. Actually, I could use your help. Yes, would you be willing to help me? Yes. Hello, TEDx. <laughs> My name is Nicole Martineau, and uh, what I just performed for you is the opening of a lesson plan, which was part of a study I piloted last fall. And in this study, I took theater, and I put it into a high school biology classroom. Just now, uh, several of you caught up on it, I was enrolled as one of my f heroes in biology, Dr. Rosalind Franklin. Her work in the 1950s told Watson and Crick that DNA was a double helix, but it wasn't until several years after her death that the world at large understood that if Watson and Crick hadn't seen this photograph, when they did, which was shown to them without Dr. Franklin's consent or knowledge, they never could have published the groundbreaking article. So her story has a lot of controversy, and that's exactly why I chose it for an in-class drama. When I came to these students and asked them to help me change history, they bought it. They bought it, and they believed it, and they were so excited to help. They got into groups and created models of DNA using some materials I had brought, and they helped each other choose the best one to take back in time with me. When I got out of role, we had a discussion about the, um, the issues involved in using data and citing sources in science, and we also got to talk about Rosalind Franklin as a female scientist in the 1950s. At the end of this lesson, a student came up to the front of the room, and she leaned in and kind of took me into her confidence and said, that was amazing. I have never been so excited to learn biology before. Thank you. As you can tell, I get really excited about Dr. Franklin's story, and probably the only other time you'll hear me get as excited when I talk about a group of great but unheralded um, scientists and artists is when I talk about teachers. Teachers are some of the greatest scientists and artists I know. Every day, they have to teach interesting material in a new way to a bunch of really bored seventh graders. And then, and then they have to follow how that method works for every student. And keep in mind that teachers know that every student learns differently and makes different connections to material based on their personal preferences, their prior knowledge, even the way the new material is presented to them. And teachers have to create lesson plans that incorporate these multiple intelligences, as we call them in the field. So some students make better connections to material if they can access it visually, others if it's musical. Some work better alone, and others work better in groups. The lesson plan I just shared a piece of, uh, a piece of with you um, worked, worked really well for students who had visual strengths, interpersonal strengths, and kinesthetic strengths, but maybe not as much for students who were music smart or nature smart. And one of the um, big movements in education that tries to combine multiple intelligences right now is STEAM. And that stands for science and technology, interpreted through engineering and the arts, all based in mathematical elements. So it's like STEM, but we just put a little A in there for art 
And what STEM recognizes is the benefits of a multidisciplinary approach to teaching and learning. So you've probably experienced these benefits. Um, think back to your favorite lesson from high school or middle school. Maybe you had a biology teacher who let you debate the ethics of something, or an English teacher who let you film a commercial, or an AP history teacher like mine who had us write our own words to Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. Yeah, you all know the one. And then we had to sing it for the entire class. And I'll never forget what I learned doing that. What our teachers do in our favorite lessons actually builds new pathways in our brain and physiologically makes it easier to remember those two things, biology and drama or history and music or logical learning and visual learning, and it makes that lesson easier to access. More than that, teachers who do this give their students a vision of, that's more accurate of how the universe actually works. I mean, think about it. We don't describe the universe we live in using only geography or only chemistry. Every science and art is tied to another. Biology is applied chemistry. Chemistry is applied physics. What would any of the sciences mean to us if we didn't have creativity or writing? And what would anything mean to us at all if we didn't have the history of the people who brought us to where we are? All science is art. And all art is science. It's all the act of creating something new, going somewhere no one has been on a bridge you didn't know existed to see something you didn't know was there. And let me tell you, that vista is beautiful. Okay, for those of you who are more thinkers than feelers, this is for you. The research shows that when teachers integrate arts into STEM subjects, students have a uh, better attitude towards learning those subjects, and they have better factual recall. Teachers can use arts integration as an assessment tool or just as a way to teach problem solving and creativity in a way that actually gets students interested in the problem that they are solving. When you combine science and art, students have the opportunity to express themselves, and they get the chance to experiment, and not just in a sciencey way, but in the simulations of real life, as drama and the arts uniquely do. And let's face it, in that favorite lesson plan, you had fun. And when students have fun, they learn. And that's why I am so excited to share with you the results of my study. So after two weeks of drama-integrated lesson plans, we took data from a control classroom and from my drama-integrated classroom, and this is what we found. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> we did find a significant difference between the test scores my drama-integrated biology class scored significantly lower. When we looked at the attitude data, we found that neither the control class nor the drama-integrated class had an increase or decrease in their attitudes towards learning biology. I was really disappointed by those results for a long time. And I'm not anymore. Because science happened here, art happened here, and there are a lot of reasons why the results from my study don't line up with what we've seen in countless others. And now I just have to do what I expect of all of my students. I'm reevaluating my methods and my assumptions. I'm reflecting on what this study actually tells me about the way students learn and what it tells me about my study itself. And the more I reflect on it, the more I realized that there were things happening in that classroom I couldn't test. Teaching is hard and messy and thrilling. And the fact is that there were things going on, students blooming in ways I couldn't assess. And that's why I teach. That's why all teachers teach. So we can hear the student who would have been silent and we can reach that student who would have sat back. And we can feel the power of the connections we are making with that student who says, that was amazing. Thank you.